A new initiative to save the rhino has been launched. It's called Project 1743. It's brought the largest population of rhino outside state protected areas in the world. The focus is to increase rather than just conserve the population. For one, this we're joined by Jane Wilshire, CEO of Project 1743. A very good morning to you. Tell us more about this project. Good morning, Jane, and to your listeners. Yes, we are very pleased to tell you that we are bringing you good news about our rhinos. I know that you've been told that they're being poached to extinction. They are. Despite the heroic uh, efforts of uh, our game rangers, our wardens, people who put their lives on the line all the time, and fantastic donations from the public. But now is the time for us to actually look at a different model because the other one is not working. Mm. We are a group of businessmen who are looking to use the power of capital. And the power of capital, when it is making good returns to invest in a, a good area. And if you have a look, when we first named Project 1743, it was because there were 1,743 rhino. Last Thursday, we had already 1,823. A calf is born every few days on our operation. We have not had a successful poaching since March 2017, three and a half years. So we are offering now to the investing community to invest in R plus units that are based or linked to Rhino Horn and to the concerned public. This is a way, if you want to invest in Rhino's future, here is a, a, an area where you can invest in Rhino's future with a proven track record and know that you're making a difference to rhinos. Okay, so I mean, basically and more rhino are dying than being born at the moment. So if somebody invests in this, <clears throat> excuse me, I mean, what, how do they invest and, and what happens? So these rhino that you are looking after are safe, they cannot be poached, and it is clearly sustainable. It is quite clearly sustainable in the only area where it has, it needs extra help is in the financial side. We have had a ban on the international trade in rhino horn. During those 44 years, rhinos have gone extinct in 24 out of the 29 uh, countries in Africa where they used to be. Uh, the rhino in Kruger National Park have halved over five years. The ban is not working. Mm. We are, it is legal now to trade in rhino, but we have chosen not to trade in rhino horn. We are trading in an investment instrument, which you will be able to buy on Zarex, which is a stock exchange, uh, which will regulate the trade in the R plus units, which are underpinned by rhino horn. Well, well done, Jane. I mean, you're absolutely right. It hasn't been working. Burn, burning rhino horn hasn't been working. So this is a chance to do something different. And just remind us of why we need to look after rhinos. Obviously, they're magnificent. They're fantastic for, from a tourist point of view. But when it comes to the ecosystem and the sort of role they play, tell us what it is. Jane, these are amazing creatures. Merely by being in a habitat, they change things. I will give you just one thing that has surprised me lately. They actually change the landscape more than elephants do. So you'll see rhino love wallowing. And they wallow in little scrapes of the ground that get wet when there's, there's rain. They take large quantities of mud out of there walk this into the, the surrounding bush 
spreading nutrients, but little by little, they actually make that mud scrape into a, a natural water holding um, dam. So that's just one of the things that rhino do. Rhino are a keystone species. There are large numbers of creatures, big and small. We all know about the dung beetles. We all know about the ticks. But I don't know if many of us know about the pipits that actually need the rhino's short grass uh, lawns in which to live. Okay, so 40,000 really... reasons to keep them living, Jane. Good luck on this project Absolutely. and thanks for talking to us. Thank you.